did really well again at Alton Park. We got the race got called short. And we had called short, and we had an issue with the, with, the front. With, the, with the front wheel nut. Um, so we had issues, but we still we took our first win, and that was quite for me. That was quite at Alton. That was quite strange because we took our first win, but we had big issues. We were yeah. we were like twenty seconds in the lead at Alton Park. An issue developed with a bike that was really bad, yeah. really bad. I was hanging. I was struggling to hang on to the the handling with the handlebars, I was getting blisters, arm pumped because of this issue that we had that I couldn't work out what it was or if it was going to then break and, you know, so I backed it right off and within three laps we'd lost like 10 seconds yeah. and I was starting to panic then that we weren't going to then win and this had all been ideal because we we'd been fastest in every session yeah. and I thought, oh, I don't believe this. It's our first win and it's not going to happen. But we managed, we nursed it, yeah. didn't we? And yeah. we got there. I mean, obviously, student didn't know was probably thinking, what on earth am I doing? Because it was all over the yeah. shop, wasn't it? I could see him, but I can tell when Stephen struggled on the bike just with his body language. And then I slowly but surely it started dawning on me. I was like, nah, there's something seriously not right. And we, we, you can tell that you slowed down. I think we, afterwards we both said we've never been so glad to see a red flag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, got red flag with two to go and and, and that was declared a uh, result. So we, so we took the win and we were, still, we were still 10 seconds in the lead. But I think my... Our first win, and like my first win in a British Championship, was I thought you know elation, and and, yeah. and and it wasn't. It was just relief. <laughs> it was just pure relief that we'd got to the, yeah. that we'd won the race. You know. And that. I've seen Steve's uh, phone call on my phone but I'd cracked the screen when I was away sailing, so I couldn't answer the phone. Bearing in mind we've been mates for years, yeah. so you know we, we, we've been pal about and and you know so we, it's not unusual for us to phone each yeah. other so it's just but the amount of phone calls was was a bit odd so i got off the boat and i plugged it into the car and i phoned Stephen, and it wasn't as, as cool as that it was like all right clark here's a going say yeah not bad steve what's happening oh not a lot i said yeah i've missed quite a few phone calls from you yeah 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 no i i, I was after a favor so oh, yeah do you need a hand moving out the new house then no 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 it's not that i was like do, do you want one of the trailer he's like no no uh, how do you feel about passenger? I was like, no. And I drove from Largs and I eventually got him off the phone at Edinburgh City Bypass only because I said to him, I'll think about it. And at that point, this was a Friday night and it yep. must have been about half past five, six o'clock and Steve says, oh, that's great, that's great. But can you let me know by Sunday because I need to have the forms away for Monday morning. So uh, <laughs> I said, bloody hell, Steve. No pressure. Yeah, no, no. So... Uh, I said to him, I'll tell you what, I'll never think about it. And either way, I've not seen you for a while, so I'll pop down and see you Sunday and I'll give you an answer Sunday. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great, that'd be great. And yeah, and that's kind of, from my side, that's that's how what happened. I've had a long chat with uh, with Rob as well. Again, who the three of us are good friends. First time me and Stephen were on a bike together. It was probably his fortune, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It, it was. was. His fortune. Yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was the practice day. And um, it was the first time I'd ridden a sidecar um, since the accident. So it was a long time ago now, but that was, you know, it was, uh, it was obviously a massive step back to racing, but it just felt right. Um, I mean, Stuart's, you've raced on an F1 for yeah. quite a few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and especially around these fortune. Yeah. So Stuart was comfortable. Um, not so much on an LCR on 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 the chassis that we have, but um, it didn't take long, really. Did nah, it? it didn't take long at nah. all to get comfortable. I think it was more altering everything that was suspension wise for Rob because I'm so much shorter. Yeah. Than was, uh, yeah. When I heard Rob was going to have a go in a racing car, I was not surprised at all. But I was also, I was just so chuffed that he was just having a, you know, getting out and having a go. And because I know he was still keen as mustard. And I think we've said a few times about having another, getting on back on the back yeah. for, a, for a go on the sidecar, you know. And so when, but it, it's just brilliant. The one thing I felt was missing for people with a disability was the kind of mindfulness aspect of getting out of. Being in a race car. <laughs> the charity was started in November 2016. And it's a great way of giving people the life back and letting them realise they're alive. That's really what it's about. 
One of these things I'd never heard anything about it in the past. Again, threw my way to Sean, who had come for a day. I think he found out through one of the Scottish spinal injury charities. I have to say I was apprehensive in the wet because you've just no idea. But again, going out with Colin and Colin had been around a few times, so there was plenty of grip on the tyres. Visibility was a problem because it's you're steaming up your visor and glasses, everything's steaming up. But yeah, it was okay. Really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a hell of a lot more than I thought I was going to. Trust me, I've been there. What does it do for them? We have, it's not anecdotal, it's factual. We have got lots of evidence of people having been along one of our sessions or multiple sessions were saying, thank you so much. You've no idea what you've done for us because of the place that person was in. And it's now helped them to come away from that. And that to me makes it all the more worth it for us as a, as a, a Scottish charity to support anybody out there that requires that. Yeah, I just think it's mega. I'm a racer, Rob's a racer. It's just the buzz, isn't it, of racing? Yeah. And it's just, and, and uh, I know he'll be, I know he'll be quick, because I know what he's like. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it's superb, superb. We've actually had to work really hard because when after the crash and testing we put a new we had to get a new fairing which Roger Body kindly um, donated to us. But it was a different shape and it was slightly taller and you think that would make a blind bit of difference, but it made a massive yeah, difference definitely. and it took us a long time. And we're not talking seconds, but we're talking maybe half a second. But for a while we couldn't work out why we were struggling at certain tracks to get that half a second. And it purely was you know, the, the style of the back of the fair and didn't allow Stuart to come over and forward as much to give me quite as much front. And in turn, that developed into... We couldn't go to a track with exactly the same setup of the year, as the year before, which is, what we, which is what you would do. The confidence thing is you could have the... Know, one of the fastest racers in, in the world in any form of, well, I'm talking about motorsport, probably any sport actually, to be perfectly honest, and they can be the most talented person, but if they're not confident in what they're trying to do, they won't achieve it. We have a little rituals before we go out, um, you know, uh, I'm quite superstitious before I go out, so it's three kisses, no less, no more, and, and that's every time. And I always say that, she, you know, it always sounds a bit cheesy as well, but she, she is my rock.
the brake on the reverse grid, found the right gaps, got through the front, settled down into rhythm and yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah, the bike's the bike's fantastic. Yeah, we, you know, we work hard with the setup. Every every session is always striving for perfection, and it's never perfect. So just, but it's just little tweaks. Don't get lost in it, and uh, just keep working at it. Yeah, it's going really well. It's going like a dream, to be honest. That's uh, ten wins on the trot, and um, I think that's a ninety-point lead now. So it's it's going better than I ever expected you know you can't get you know anything can happen in racing so you just got to keep stacking the points up and, and uh, just take it race by race and hopefully we get to the, uh, the last round as champions that's the plan I was looking for, you know, to be a British champion now. And I'm not one for saying things with no meaning, or, or you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't publicly say that that's what I want to do and that's what I'm going to do if I didn't think I could do it. But that, that is what I wanted to do. And that's what I wanted to achieve. And I was just waiting and waiting and waiting until the day that I was old enough to to drive the outfit. Your your confidence grows within yourself and, and Stuart on the back's just been absolutely perfect and um, as a team we've grown and uh, that it's self-belief you know we, we know what we've done we worked hard with the bike and uh, you know we, we've understood our suspension and things like that and it makes a big difference <laughs> I don't worry. Don't worry about Steve at all. He's cool, calm, calculated, and sensible. I'm listening to the bike. Fantastic, to be honest with you. We, yes, that's what we've been striving for all season, but we never, never let it get to you throughout the year. You know, we, you, you, you focus on each race at a time, taking the points, building it up, and you know, it, at Thruxton, you know, it became real at Thruxton at the last round. Um, because we knew that it was possible this weekend, but yesterday, to be honest, in the race, we ran our race. Uh, the lads put the pit board out with you know, British champions on it, and uh, on the, as we crossed the line for the checkered flag, and it's been the uh, well, it's been my lifetime goal, so it's the greatest feeling in the world. Back tonight, there'll be a bit of party in the car as there usually is on the way home. Uh, Coffee, coffee will be supplied by Stephen, <laughs> uh, and then yeah, I think Stephen's planning on having a party at his at some point in the future. So yeah, so sort of, I think November time we'll get all this, all our sponsors and everyone that's helped us through our careers uh, and our friends, uh, and we'll have a big old, we'll have a big old party for sure.